I'd like to invite you on a transformative journey, one that includes you, your story, your experiences, your culture, and the absolute best version of you. What if diversity, equity, and inclusion actually needed you in order to be most effective? But not just any old you, the happy you, the excited you, the energetic you, the absolute best version of you. Has anyone ever had the experience of wanting to go into your supervisor's office and just ask them to be better, to be better leaders, to create a better environment, to maybe communicate better? Well, I actually did it. In 2006, the summer after my sophomore year at Vanderbilt University, I found myself in the head coach's office with two other teammates asking coach to do that exact thing. Now, we all were sitting there considering transferring after having individual success, but falling so short of our actual potential. Sure, we went to the NIT tournament two years in a row, won more games than we lost, but we knew there was so much more that we could have achieved. And so here we are in the head coach's office, scared, nervous, but also courageous, telling our head coach that something has to change. And by something, we meant him. He was known all over the world for being a great coach who was also tough on players. He also created a hostile environment, one where the players didn't want to be there. And they only did enough just to get by. And it showed, not only in our practice, but also in games. But to our surprise in this meeting, Coach actually wanted to make a deal with us. He said, if you'll commit to making sure that your teammates show up to work every day and work hard and help us to change this culture, then I'll commit to being better. I'll commit to bringing a great attitude every day. We were shocked but also up for the challenge. You see, I believe that many of us find ourselves in a similar spot in the workplace. After years and years of diversity talks and speakers and celebrating various cultures monthly, many have felt overwhelmed, underappreciated, undervalued. Many have expressed feeling diversity fatigue, burnout, this is a conversation that has been politicized and polarized all over the country. And it certainly seems like there's been a lot more fear, less real solutions. And so, in the midst of this environment, I believe that this is what happens when we focus so much effort, so much energy on performance and not enough on people. Pew Research Center did a study and found that less than 51% of employees are actually happy at work. And when we look deeper into the details, we find that less than 35% are happy with their pay or opportunities for promotion. And less than 45% are happy with the professional development and career opportunities. You see, happiness matters. And when our workforce isn't happy, then they fall well short of their potential, which means our business falls short of its potential as well, just like my college basketball team. I'll never forget having a conversation with a CEO when he realized that as he was getting ready to retire, that not one person beneath the director level would ever make enough money to actually be able to retire. To that, he said, this is a problem. This is a problem when we look around and we see that the cost of childcare has grown exponentially and it puts a ton of pressure on our parents who are workers and causes them to have to make very difficult decisions. But it also contributes to stress at work. 
The University of Oxford did a study and found that productivity in the workplace actually increases when people are happy at work. It's so critical, so important to think about how do we make sure that every single individual in the workplace is not just there, but that they actually have a great day. Not just any old day, but a great day. One where we prioritize how we're actually contributing to each individual reaching their peak potential. What if, what if every interview that we did for a particular role included the question, how do you plan to ensure that your peers have a great day and reach their potential? What if leaders and executives were held to the standard that a part of their responsibility was showing up with effort, with energy and excitement alongside their expertise, their wisdom, the outcomes? What if we actually held people accountable for their actions? and used how they impacted others as a key performance indicator? What if we actually measured these impacts as a direct indication of our actual workplace culture? You see, it only seems awkward because I believe that we've even subconsciously just accepted the fact that work should be hard and that the most well-respected leaders are often the most difficult to work for. But what if, what if the expectation was that we all show up having a great day at work? What would change? Would it change how we actually saw people? Would it change how we seek their value and not just their disability? Would it change how we saw people's uniqueness and weren't afraid of their differences? Would it change how we looked at gatekeepers, those who play a pivotal role in the professional development and growth and career mobility, but they also choose who doesn't grow at all? Would it change what we celebrate within the organizations? who we celebrate, and how we go about ensuring that every individual is not only valuable, but respected. You see, I believe wholeheartedly that when we prioritize everyone having a great day and everyone reaching their actual potential, that people would actually work harder. You see, the world can be a dangerous place. But the workplace should be a place where we take pride in the experiences that we create for others. Where we're excited to greet each other with a smile. Where we care about each other's families. Where we prioritize diversity. Where we make equity the expectation. And where we value inclusivity. Oh, and I almost forgot to tell you what happened at Vanderbilt University in my last two years. Well, we fell one game short of going undefeated two years in a row. We beat the most ranked teams in the country. We beat the number one team in the country both years. We finished in the top 25, went to the Sweet 16, got a chance to experience March Madness. And I am still the all-time leading scorer in Vanderbilt men's basketball history. Coincidence? I think not. We worked harder, smarter, and we leveraged each other's strengths to outperform the competition and ultimately reach our potential. So here's an idea. The next time you're opening up that computer and starting a Zoom meeting, the next time you're walking into the office, Pick your head up, throw your shoulders back, look at somebody with a smile and ask them, are you ready to have a great day?
Let me know how that works out for you. Thank you, Fab.